Hello again. I'm recording this video a while after recording the previous ones, so hopefully I won't mix things up. In this video, I wanted to give you an overview of three important classes and one important interface. The classes are attribute, attribute stats, and instances, and the attribute is instance. The class attribute is a class for handling an attribute, as the name suggests. Once the, an attribute has been created, it can't be changed. So basically, you can actually create your, your own attributes using this class, although I won't be doing that. I will be just reading them from an existing data set. The other class is attribute stats. The name says it all. It's a utility class that contains summary information on the values that can appear in a data set for a particular attribute. So if I just show you the documentation, for example, class attribute has uh, a nice set of useful methods and uh, fields so remember it's dealing with an attribute now one attribute at a time um, that's the constructor summary if you want to create your own attribute and here we can uh, make use of extremely useful methods in there I'll show you some of these for example you can check whether an attribute is a date you just check the type true or false is date, is nominal, is numeric, things like that, is string, uh, the number of values, um, the attributes name, for example, and so on and so forth. And then for the attribute stats, what we can get, for example, is access to these nice fields, distinct count, unique count, total count. I hope you know the difference between distinct and unique. So unique only appears once, whereas distinct, uh, a value can appear several times, but we count it as one, yes? Uh, the number of nominal, number of missing, and things like that. Very useful ones. And another useful one is numeric stats for numeric variables here. It returns a, an, an object of type stats, which again has a nice set of useful fields like count, maximum, uh, the mean value, the minimum value, standard deviation, the sum and the sum of the squared values, and so on and so forth. So these are attribute stats, uh, attribute, attribute stats, and stats. The other ones I wanted to cover our interface instance so the in instance in the interface represents an instance all values you know the types of values are internally stored as floating point numbers if an attribute is nominal or string or relational the stored value is the index of the corresponding nominal or string or relational value in the attributes definition what that means is for example if we have an attribute of, t of uh, a nominal type it has maybe three or four uh, values then instead of st storing those um, values, we just give them indices 0, 1, 2, and 3, and then we store the indices. Likewise for the class, for example, if you remember the Irish data set, uh, Weka doesn't actually store those uh, class names, but it's, it gives them indices and it stores the uh, uh, indices, I'm sorry, in, in, in interface instance. The instances class, it deals with the data set as a whole, as we have seen before. So if we go to the documentation this is interface instance with again a large number of user methods I really encourage you to read these methods become familiar with them have a look you can get the number of attributes the number of classes the number of values things like that from class instance for, for, I'm sorry for from interface instance now yes you can set weight a weight for a certain instance if you're uh, for example dealing with weight weighted uh, uh, set of instances or can retrieve the weight of a certain instance again as we said before a large number of very very useful methods and then in class instances again we can access for example the last instance the first instance um, then we can get the number of classes number of attributes and so on and so forth we can randomize or shuffle the instances for example if we want to do that again have a look at these methods just quick quickly read through them they are extremely useful let me show you the code I have prepared it's quite uh, as easy to understand so the class is called at inst with useful comments here I'm loading the with a numeric numeric data here a data set that comes with Weka get the data source object and load the data get the instance object now using the get data set from the class data source uh, we're using this because it can read several types not only R but it reads CSV and so on and so forth and then we can get the we can get I'm sorry set the class index so which column or which field or which attribute is the class uh, if data class index equals minus one ie if the class set index is not set 
then we say data about set class index so class index and set class index and num attributes are methods from class instances from this class instances here um, just set it to the last one the very last one and then we can get the number of attributes num attributes so data about num, num attributes minus one notice that when we say number of attributes that excludes the class attribute it's not counted as an attribute as the other attributes yep the class attribute is an attribute on its own now we get the number of attributes and then we loop through them yeah one by one one attribute at a time uh, we can say for example data which is our instance object dot attribute the ith attribute so that that returns uh, an object of type attribute and then dot is nominal whether it's nominal or not i know my data for example has nominal and numeric columns if i show you the data quickly this is uh, the numeric data set so if i just show you that then you can see that some attributes are numeric and some others are um, uh, uh, nominal yep so check whether attribute is nominal if yes just print out message and then get the number of values there so number of values in the nominal attribute uh, we can get an attribute stats object for example using data dot attribute stats we pass it the attribute index i.e the ith attribute we're looking through them one by one and then we can for example get distinct count for example or maybe the unique count as we explained previously and then we for, for the ith attribute for the current attribute we can get uh, I'm sorry if it's numeric then we can get a stats object so we say data dot attribute of i which is our, the ith attribute is numeric if it's true just print out attribute is numeric and then get a stats object just be careful here uh, Weka has more than one stats object the one we are concerned with here is from Weka dot experiments experiment dot stats so that's the class stats we're using and then we can just print out for example s dot min s dot max those fields we saw before s maybe dot the mean value and so on and so forth after that maybe we can get the number of instances uh, from the instances object from the data ob ob data uh, variable that we said before is this method is in class instances and then we can look through the instances one by one and then we can get the jth instance so I'm using j here for the loop so instance instance equals data dot instance and we pass it the index if uh, for example the first attribute is missing we we'll just say zero here the attribute index maybe we should have we should have made this inside this for loop so we have a nested loop but no problem I hope you get the idea um, instance dot is missing for the f zero attribute i.e. the first attribute if yes then print out this message and then we say instance as we said as we mentioned before we're dealing with them one instance at a time now so if instance dot class is missing if this is true if the class value is missing then it prints that out and then the last one here is quite interesting if you remember I said uh, Weka give gives class class values uh, indices and deal with them uh, with to, through their ind indices here what we can do is we can call the method class value from class instance and if we read about it we can find that it actually return um, a double yeah returns an instance's class value as a floating point number that's because this using a, a number we can consider it as the index or if the class is actually numerical then we have it right there but what, what, what we need to do here because if it returns double we just need to typecast it into integer we just need to get the integer value and that's the index of the class so what I say here is for example instance dot class attribute dot value so class attribute for example uh, returns an, 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 an object of type attribute and then we said dot value and then we pass it the class index and it will print out the value of the class not the index but the actual value the nominal or string or relational value let me just execute enough talking so we'll see what the data looks like if I show you the results here then the zeroth attribute attribute I'm sorry is nominal it has three values it has three distinct values the first the zero the, the, I, I, the first the second one because it has index one uh, is zero based indices we have here it has 12 distinct values it's numeric and then print out minimum value maximum value and mean value and so on and so forth numeric second one numeric and the sorry the third one is numeric and the fourth one is nominal and then here no no yes 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 these are the class values 
as you can see here for the numeric with a numeric data set if I just change it for example if I show you the uh, whether the um, the nominal all are nominal so anything I have prepared here for numeric anything I have prepared prepared here for numeric won't actually work if I for example run that and then show you the output as you will see it doesn't actually show us uh, much about the oh I've not changed it uh, I need to change it in the code I'm sorry so here I need to say whether dot nominal so we don't have any numeric attributes if I just execute now and then show you the results then it's telling me the zeroth attribute is nominal first it is nominal that's like first second third and fourth they're all nominal so it doesn't print out anything with regards to numeric stats as we saw here yep i hope that makes sense it's quite nice and easy i know i hope you find it useful thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in one of my next videos